Today in the Grand Touring Concepts Garage, we're going to take these three products to turn this Mustang hood into this. Stay tuned. Chances are you've seen more than one Ford vehicle with an aluminum hood that's got this going on. We've got this bubbling, flaking corrosion underneath the paint. And there's lots of professional fixes for it, but for me, it's one of those cases of it's already broken, you can't make it any worse. So let's flake it off, sand it off, put some color match on, blend it back into the existing hood, and see if we can't at least make it good from 5 or 10 feet away. First thing I'm going to do, sand all these blisters off, get down to the bare aluminum, try and get rid of that corrosion. As you can see, we've just laid out some painter's tape here, just to keep us from going over too far into the still competent parts of the paint. I'm going to start with some 80 grit and just feather this stuff off. As you can see, we're about finished with the 80 grit. We've worked everything back. You can see where the corrosion is in here. If you had really deep pitting, you could touch that up with spot and glazing putty or a similar product. But for me, we're just going to keep sanding. So now, to get rid of these aggressive marks, we're going to go to lighter and lighter sanding grits. Now we're just going to start working with some 320 grit. Now that we've got our sanding done down to about a 400 grit and everything feathered over a boat as well as i am got tolerance to do, uh, we've got our Duplicolor Primer Sealer here. This stuff gives a pretty good finish. We're just going to put a light coat, let that flash up, give it a brief little sand, and then another fresh coat on top. And you'll see I've masked the entire area off. So let's just start with uh, checking our paint. Make sure we've got paint coming. See you in 20 minutes. So the first coat of primes had a chance to dry. We're just gonna lightly buff that down with some soft 400 grit. Just uh, prep it for another light coat.
Okay, so now we're ready to unmask this. Give this just the lightest sanding, just to smooth out that little lump. And then we're going to start applying color and feathering it and blending it all back in through the previously painted section that still has good paint. This is where our pass or fail will really come into its own. So we have our masking removed is what we're going to want to do is feather this hard edge back so we don't end up with a transition line between our old paint and our new paint. And for that I'm just using a little bit of a 400 grit to go along the edge. You want it so you can't feel a lip. So I've moved my mask far back and we're going to start blending our color in with our silver metallic. It's uh, important to be very careful not to lay this on too heavily and just go with light layers and feather back a little further with each pass. That first coat's had some time to flash off, so now it's time to apply a nice light second coat. And one final light coat. And finally, we're going to finish the job with some clear coat, just to match the finish a little bit between the original paint and the new paint. After allowing this coat to set up, we're going to give another coat, and if everything looks all right, then we'll step on to letting that dry. Some cleanup with some clay bar and some other products, and this should be about done. We're into the home stretch now. So, so what we're going to do is take this line here. You can see that there's a distinct change between the original clear coat and what we've sprayed. So we're going to get rid of this overspray and smooth it out first. Starting off with a little bit of clay bar.
So once the clay bar begins to glide smoothly over the paint, you can take a look and see that we've gotten quite a bit of overspray out of there. So the next thing we're going to do is move on to a clean and then a brief polish. For this step, we're going to be using Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. Basically, just to knock this down and blend it in with the other side, I'm going to be using a hand pad. And uh, you can also use a machine, which I may step up to once I get this going. Progress was going a little slower than I would like, so I stepped up to Meguiar's Fine Cut Cleaner, you know, about a five on the abrasive list, and I did grab the dual action Porter Cable Polisher. I just ran that with a super soft pad, lots of, uh, lots of compound on it, and high speed, just over and over, clean frequently, and it's not bad. As you drag across, you feel the original, then down here it gets a little rough. So a little bit of wet sanding or further polishing with a, a polisher would get you going. But as far as I'm concerned, we're nearly done. We're going to step on to the last steps of putting a little bit of polish on there and then some wax. And there we have it. That's a little bit of polish, a little bit of wax. It's uh, better than when we started. It will not get you through a car show, but for a daily driver car where you use it every day, and in this case it's a high mileage example, it's far better than looking at big chips out of the paint and it should hopefully stop it from getting any worse. So I've already had to do the passenger side and it came out pretty good. So at least the driver's side now is more or less a 5 to 10 foot match. But as you can see with the sun moving across the hood this was a long process about four hours five hours in total. Lots of prep, lots of waiting for stuff to dry and if a person had a lot of patience did wet sanding and stuff like that, you could really blend this in very, very well. But that gives you a brief overview, and thanks for watching.